The deck of the USS Inferno vibrated with the hum of engines preparing to chart a course through the void of space. It wasn't her first dance with the stars, but the tension that wrapped around Captain Eva Caro's crew was thicker than the hull of their frigate. Each member, chosen for their exceptional skill and valor, felt the weight of the unknown as they surrounded the metallic table, its surface a kaleidoscope of technical readouts and orbital maps. Sergeant Knox, prep your team. We've got an anomaly singing its siren's call from Phobos, and command wants us at the choir front, Captain Caro ordered, her gaze capturing every marine in the suffusing azure light of the strategy room. Knox, a mountain of a man whose reputation preceded him, nodded once. Marines, we've been tapped for recon, he grunted. Gear up in ten. Weapons, suits, and nothing less than your best. Boots clicked and gear clacked as the squad assembled their arsenal with well-rehearsed precision. Shotguns with magnetic propulsion, armors interwoven with sensors, technology the squad trusted with their lives. Each Marine moved with the silent fervor, the kind that spoke of experience rather than words, each set of eyes glinting like polished steel, mirroring thoughts they chose not to voice. Theirs was not to reason why, theirs was to do or die. As the frigate neared the misshapen moon, its surface a tapestry of craters and canyons, the crew held their breath. Sensors scanned every inch, searching for the origin of the signal that had hijacked every deep space monitor from here to the Kuiper belt. Approach vector locked, we're on the dark side in two, the pilot, Lieutenant Hayes, announced, his fingers dancing over holographic controls. The harsh light of monitors cut deep shadows across their faces, the darkness of Phobos creeping closer, an omnipresent spectator to the unfolding scene. With a silent caress against the moon's orbit, the inferno aimed its belly, the cargo bay gaping open like the mouth of some great leviathan, ready to disgorge the marines into Phobos's embrace. Visual on Phobos? Looks like a ghost, Hayes whispered, the image of the barren satellite filling the viewing pane. But even ghosts whisper, Carol replied. Keep your eyes sharp. The squad assembled in the cargo bay, the final checks on their suits inciting a symphony of electric whirs and hisses. They braced themselves against the metallic floors in zero gravity, the familiar click of magnetic boots securing them like anchors in a cosmic sea. Eva's voice was a lance of steel through their comms. All units, report! Each Marine's confirmation rang clear, a chorus of readiness. We are a go for insertion, she declared. Knox gave a curt nod and pushed through the cargo bay doors. Space enveloped the Marines, an endless expanse dotted with stars, deceptively peaceful. Jetpacks sputtered to life as they propelled towards the moon, carving silver trails in the abyss. The signal, once an abstract series of blips and bleeps from so far away, now crescendoed into a beacon, an electrified call cutting through the static of space. The sound touched each Marine's mind, an ethereal melody that was neither entirely machine nor seemingly alive. It promised knowledge, power, or perhaps oblivion, and every soul aboard the Inferno knew that whatever answer lay buried on this desolate satellite would alter the fate of empires. It was that thought which burned in their chests, hotter than the thrusters that now slowed their descent to the moon's scarred surface. Metal boots touched down on alien soil, dust kicking up around them as if Phobos itself recoiled at the intrusion. The Marines advanced, rifles at the ready, the cryptic signal leading them onward. The tension could have been sliced with a vibro knife, hanging heavy in the atmosphere. The USS Inferno loomed above, a silent guardian watching over her brood, ready to deliver hellfire should the need arise. But for now, every Marine looked to Knox, eyes fixed through visors at their captain standing vigilant on the frigate's bridge. And for all their might and machinery, for every piece of star-forged metal they bore, the mysteries of Phobos whispered of dangers not yet known, of technology untouched by human hands. The first stage of their odyssey had just begun. The stutter of the pulse rifle's discharge eclipsed the silent majesty of Phobos, its echo swallowed by the vacuum, yet felt through the suits of the Marines as they encountered a perimeter defense no scan had foretold. Turrets camouflaged like the steel carapace predators of ancient Earth, erupted from the moon's surface, their barrels glowing with ominous pre-illumination. Contact, twelve high, six low, 
Knox roared over the calm, his words the hammer that shattered any facade of stealth. Suppressive fire! Move for cover! The Marines responded with the precision of a singular mind, dispersing into a ballet of gunfire and evasion amidst the craters. Servo motors in their suits whined with exertion, amplifying their agility as they zigzagged across the rocky terrain. Corporal Vega, the unit sniper, took a vantage point atop a towering cleft. She aimed down her scope, her breathing a controlled hiss as she systematically silenced the turrets, one precise shot succeeding another. Where turrets once screamed their intent, only sparks and silence remained. Knox, navigating through the abrupt onslaught, chanced upon an anomaly. A shadow against the slate of Phobos, it was not a crater but a crevice, too regular to be nature's craft. Eyes on me, he broadcasted, signaling to the Marines, new objective. Regrouped and suppressing residual tremors from adrenaline, they converged on the curious chasm. The entrance, it had to be an entrance, was framed by an archaic metal, symbols etched upon it thrumming with a soft luminescence. Barrier or doorway, it was alien, and it beckoned. Steel, you're up, Knox summoned their tech, his voice betraying no surprise that the mission had just veered into uncharted territory. Specialist Steel approached the emblazoned seal, her fingers dancing over the tablet wired into her arm's exosuit. Cryptic runes responded to her touch, the glow intensifying with each sequence she dared to decipher. The squad tensed, fingers poised over triggers as Steel performed her silent duet with the alien interface. A moment stretched to infinity until with a resonant thrum the seal parted, revealing the ink-black maw of the facility. The team shared a collective quickened pulse as they set foot across the threshold, their huds piercing the void with beams of light. Each step into the bowels of Phobos was one further away from the stars above, one deeper into a clandestine tomb or treasure trove. Knox led the Marines through halls of silent metal, the clang of their boots a testament to life within a tomb of technology. The signal that had called them now lay silent as if the unlocking of the door had satisfied its need to be heard. In its place was the eerie chorus of their own exhalations, each breath an affirmation of their plunge into the heart of a secret that had remained buried until now. The facility unraveled before them like a malign labyrinth intent upon concealing its center. With each step the Marines felt the press of eyes unseen, every shadow a potential harbinger of hostility, every corner poised to bear fangs. And as though their very presence had summoned defenders from the arms of this cold monument of science, the Marines stood ready, knowing the echoes of their first encounter would soon be drowned in the cacophony of a new confrontation. Phobos may be silent no more, but its secrets were still fiercely guarded. As the Marines journeyed deeper, the sterility of the corridors yielded to a chamber that throbbed with power, the pulse of machinery resonating through their very bones, Within the heart of the facility they stumbled upon the architects of this subterranean fortress, an ensemble of synthetic guardians, their forms an amalgam of alien elegance and human dread. Knox barely had a second to shout, Hostiles! before the chamber erupted into a tempest of retaliatory fire and gleaming limbs. The Marine's armor withstood the initial onslaught, but as more constructs emerged it became clear this was a trial not simply of strength but of cunning. The squad fell back into practice maneuvers, a whirl of motion. Their resistance was a timed dance, an answer to the AI's lethal choreography. Explosions stuttered the air, deafening in the closeness of the fray. Fall into the pattern, Delta cover! Knox's command cut through the chaos as he, Vega, and Steel slid into synchronized cover. Specialist Weaver, his fingers a blur, hacked into a dormant console, eyes reading lines of code foreign yet archetypally familiar. I've got something, he said, a litany of foreign script cascading on his display. They're guarding it. Before he could finish, the ground quaked as the exertion of battle strained the facility's integrity. Panels blew out, sending shrapnel into their sanctuary of cover. Through the symphony of combat, a datum line twisted its way through the computations, coordinates to the core of a weapon system, alien yet unmistakably purposeful. Their objective crystallized in a spear of clarity. They weren't just invaders. They were now sentinels vying for a power that could crown or crucify civilizations. Information secured. Move to extraction. The choice was made. 
The cipher they needed was theirs. Bracing against the downpour of dissuasion from their mechanical adversaries, they threaded their way back through the artifice they had pierced. The guardians, though relentless, began to lag, as though tethered to the chamber they had so vigorously defended. Emerging into the oppressive silence outside the complex, Vega caught her breath. From defense to offense, she noted, her tone a mix of admiration and apprehension. It's a weapon, Steele said, her gaze locked on the retreating ingress, one that could decide the fate of every soul not buried in this rock we're standing on. With that revelation, the squad consolidated their wounded and weary members, their retreat an arrow of intention poised towards the inferno, waiting in meticulous vigil above. Phobos, once an idle moon, had become a pivotal arena where the balance of cosmic powers rested uncertainly in the hands of Earth's defenders. And for the Marines of the USS Inferno, retreat was no conclusion, but rather a prelude to the imperative task that lay before them, securing the salvation or destruction of such epic-defining power. The squad's unity was a testament to their training— a cohesion that held as solidly in the corridors of Phobos as it did in the simulation chambers back on Earth. However, as they delved deeper into the labyrinthine depths on their path to secure the weapon's core, an unforeseen treachery awaited. A new brand of chaos unfurled around them without warning. The Marines found themselves in a crossfire, an ambush laid by rivals as silent and deadly as space itself. Rival faction troops, none familiar and all fiercely determined, poured from hidden alcoves, their weapons drawn. The Marines' world became a blur of kinetic energy, their tactical formation fracturing under the impact of the surprise assault. Contact rear! Flanking left! Private Jensen shouted, his voice a raw edge in the squad's comms. The relentless barrage from the attackers took its toll. Specialist Weaver's suit ruptured under the onslaught, his scream a piercing siren in his team's ears. Sergeant Knox barked orders, dragging his injured comrade to the temporary reprieve of a ravaged alcove. Yo, steel, give me a barrier. His command melded with the sound of desperation as she deployed an energy shield, the azure glow and ephemeral bulwark against the storm of enemy fire. The rivalry for dominion over Phobos's hidden weapon played out in a tapestry of gunpowder and resolve. The Marines moved not just with tactical precision, but with a ferocity kindled by the knowledge that one of their own lay vulnerable, their lifeblood a testament to the cost of their cause. As they fought, each Marine a force of unleashed fury, Knox felt the strain of command, the weight of lives in his hands. They propelled themselves not just for victory, but for the bond of those at their side, a bond being tested in every passing second of this harried battle, what do we do, Knox? Vega's voice pierced the punctuation of gunfire. We do our duty, he roared back, his words the glue that mended their resolve. Push forward, the core is close, we do this for Weaver, for Earth. With a sudden clarity born of necessity, the Marines tightened their formation, moving as a single pulse of retribution. They bore the impact of the rival faction's determination with a stalwart defiance their goal within reach as each step was bought at a steep price. Throughout the firefight, the prowling specter of defeat shadowed them, its touch nearly palpable as they fought against the encroaching darkness with spit and spite. And as the Marines endured, as they overcame each wave of aggression, they emblazoned themselves not only as warriors but guardians, a shield against the tempest that raged for dominance over the skies above. Breathless and battered, the Marines reached the inner sanctum where the weapon's core throbbed with an alien heartbeat. Blue-white veins of energy pulsed along the walls, converging on a central dais that held a sphere of swirling, chromatic mists, a sight both mesmerizing and ominous. Enshrouded in the battle-wrought haze, Captain Caro's voice crackled in their ears, "'Secure that core, Marines! It's now or never!' Advancing with grim determination, Sergeant Knox led the charge, his eyes set on the prize that had cost them already too dear a price. They locked down the room, covering entry points, forming a perimeter of steel and vigilance as Specialist Steel approached the core, her fingers poised to enact its deactivation. But as Steel's hands hovered over her console, an imposing figure emerged from the shadows, a man whose presence seemed to command the very air. The mastermind, whispered Knox, his gut clenching. 
The figure stepped into the light, his face as inscrutable as the depth of space, his eyes betraying a cold intellect. The insignia on his uniform marked him as the orchestrator of the weapon, and his hand rested casually on a device that hinted at devastating potential. Impressive, he began, his voice smooth as silk yet laced with venom, but misguided. You stand on the precipice of history, yet choose ignorance over enlightenment. Your enlightenment ends lives, Knox growled in challenge. A standoff ensnared the room, bristling with tension. In that breath-held moment, the enemy's hand twitched and the Marines erupted into motion. Vega fired her shot a streak of defiance. Time tapered into a slow-motion waltz as the mastermind dodged, engaging a shield that flared to life with an electric snarl. It was the catalyst to chaos. Bullets and blasts clashed against barriers. Knox, seizing the diversion, lunged for the core, his hands guided by Steele's frantic instructions. The heart of the weapon hummed a fever pitch, its casing cracking under the strain of containment. The mastermind advanced, a dance of death aimed at Knox, but Corporal Vega intercepted, her bravery a beacon in the rising storm. Their struggle was a conflict of ideations, each blow struck as an argument, each parry a rebuttal. As Vega fought, Knox worked, his fingers blurring over the console. The enemy near, the fate of worlds unknown, he clung to his singular objective as it was a race against the unraveling of order, against the entropy of ambition and might. With a final mighty effort, Knox engaged the destruct sequence, the command echoing through the facility like a death knell. A blinding surge, the mastermind faltering in his assault and then silence. The weapon's core lay inert, a hushed relic of thwarted calamity. Vega, her strength waning from her wounds, smiled at Knox. It's done, she breathed, a hero confessing her swan song. The squad, scarred but unbroken, gathered their fallen, the cost etched upon their hearts. In securing the weapon, ensuring Earth's momentary reprieve, they had scored a victory not just of arms but of spirit. With somber pride, they withdrew from the facility, leaving Phobos to its shadows. They had succeeded, but the echoes of their choices, the reverberations of their valor, would be worn as invisible scars, memorials for whom valor was both shield and sacrifice. Back aboard the USS Inferno, the Marines stood in solemn assembly, the silence aboard the ship as profound as the vacuum beyond its hull. They were no longer the soldiers who had landed on Phobos. They were now relics of that mission, tempered by fire and loss. Their return to Earth was met with no fanfare, no parade of valor, only the cold efficiency of debriefings and the sterile white walls of medical bays. Vega's sacrifice, and the sacrifices of all who had fallen, was absorbed into the classified archives of military operations, their actions distilled into encrypted reports that would never see the light of public accolade. Yet in the quiet of the ship's chapel, the remaining Marines gathered, a private congregation paying tribute to their comrade. They stood shoulder to shoulder, Knox at the forefront, his gaze anchored on a photograph of Vega, framed by a constellation of candlelight. We mourn as soldiers, as warriors, Knox's voice didn't tremble, for it bore the entire strength of the Marines. But we remember as family, Vega gave everything for us, for every soul back home. Her memory will guide us, a beacon in the darkness of the unknown. The faces around him, grizzled and young alike, bore the same resolution, a solemn vow etched into their expressions. Together they filed out, each Marine touching the photograph in quiet homage. It was an unspoken promise, a collective oath to uphold the inner fire that Vega had embodied, a dedication to duty, to brotherhood to the pursuit of peace through the relentless watch over the dangers that lurked within the stars. And as Earth rose in view, a blue jewel amidst the celestial tapestry, the squad of the USS Inferno prepared to step off the ramp to the soil of their home planet. They bore no outward sign of the war waged in the shadow of Phobos, but within, they carried the weight of a victory that would forever whisper in the annals of the cosmos— with the secrets of Phobos now sealed, the Marines of the USS Inferno stood together, vigilant sentinels awaiting the trumpet's call for the next battle, where they would once again stand between Earth and the infinite threats of the universe.
If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos coming your way.